So as you saw in the last video, multiplying and dividing fractions really isn't too bad. You just kind of go straight across, and it's a pretty good process. Adding and subtracting fractions is slightly more complicated because you do need to have a common denominator. A common denominator means that the bottom numbers in your fractions have to be the same before you can do the problem. All you're going to do is combine the tops, the numerators, and leave the denominator the same. So on our first problem here, you can see we already have a common denominator. 8 is the bottom number in each of these fractions. That's awesome. All you do then is add your tops. Negative 3 plus 15 is going to be 12. Keep the bottom number the same. It's 12 over 8. The only thing we have to do with this, um, it is a good idea to reduce the fraction whenever possible. So 4 goes into both of these numbers. Um, I'm going to divide them both by 4. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 8 divided by 4 is 2. This reduces to 3 over 2. On the second problem here, we don't have a common denominator. The bottom numbers here are not the same. Before we can do the problem, we need to make a common denominator. So I need to think of something that 10 and 5 both go into. Well, 5 and 10 both go into the number 10. So this guy right here is already over 10. He's fine as is. But the second guy, we need to make it over 10. And we have to do 5 times 2. You have to see what you multiply by. 5 times 2 equals 10. If you do it to the bottom, you have to do it to the top as well. It's kind of like reverse um, reducing. Here we divided both parts by 4. Here we decided to multiply both parts by 2. So I keep my minus sign. I get 6 over 10 here. And now I have the same bottom number. I just subtract. I end up with negative 2 over 10, which if I reduce that, I'm going to end up with negative 1 fifth. Um, that's not the only bottom number I could have had. I could have looked at these and been like, well, 10 and 5 both go into 50. I would have had to get different bottom numbers. Like, I, that would have changed what I multiply by. But when you actually reduce, your final answer should be the same. On the next problem here, I have a 6 and a 4 in my denominator. Those are not the same thing, obviously, so I need to make them the same. So I need to ask myself, what do 6 and 4 both go into? There are a couple options here. I could do 12, I could do 24, I could do 48. It, there's tons of possibilities. But in, t in general, you want to pick the smallest number you can. It's just the easiest to work with. So 12 would be a good choice. My first guy here, 6 times 2 equals 12. So I'm going to do that to my first fraction. I end up with negative 8 over 12. Keep my minus sign. And 4 times 3 equals 12. So I'm going to multiply both of these guys by 3. And when I subtract here negative 8 minus 9, I'm going to get negative 17 over 12. That doesn't reduce, so I'm going to leave it as my final answer. On my last problem here, same deal. 5 and 7 aren't the same denominator. 35 is a number that they both go into. So this guy's going to get multiplied by 5 on top and bottom. This guy's going to get multiplied by 7. That way I get my common denominator. I end up with 14 over 35 minus, and this is going to be negative 30 over 35. 35. So if I have a minus and negative, just like we talked about with regular integers, I'm just going to turn that into a plus. So I'm going to get rid of these and just basically I'm doing 14 over 35 plus 30 over 35. My final answer is going to be 44 over 35 and that will not reduce.